Hello, friends. Welcome back to this channel where we explain physics and read physics books. Today, we bring you six books to add to your reading list if you wish to learn quantum mechanics. Five of them are the more technical physics textbooks, the type where you really learn the subject. The last one is a popular book to give you an impression and history of the matter. This one is exciting and inspirational. I will leave some affiliated links in the description below if you'd like to check out the books yourself. Let's begin. Number 1 is The Principles of Quantum Mechanics by Ramamuti Shankar. The title is derived from Dirac's famous textbook, one of the first on the subject. This is actually the first book that really taught me quantum mechanics. The author is an influential theoretical physicist from Yale who specializes in high energy and condensed matter physics. He is also a well known physics educator, known for his clear lectures. In fact, many videos of his classes in Yale can be found here on YouTube. This book is a testament to his power of exposition and is a page turner of a textbook. Most questions that a student can think of is anticipated by him. While reading this book, you really get the impression of a kind teacher patiently explaining to you the rationale behind every step. The first chapter goes through all the essential mathematics you will need for quantum mechanics. Basically, an introduction to linear algebra and vector spaces, as well as the eigenvector problems and how to solve them. Many important theorems about matrices are proven here and used throughout the book. The second chapter is an overview of classical mechanics mainly the Lagrangian and Hamiltonian formalism. These will make direct connections to quantum mechanics. The third chapter will illustrate some behaviors of particles that cannot be explained by classical mechanics. The postulates of quantum mechanics are finally introduced in chapter 4. Although this book introduced quantum mechanics in the Hamiltonian formalism, path integrals are also discussed extensively. I highly recommend this book for someone taking a first course in quantum mechanics. But not just that, this book will take you all the way to advanced topics like the Dirac's equation. The next book is volume 1 of a set of 3 books, which are based on the lectures given by one of my professors who taught me quantum mechanics. They started off as handwritten lecture notes for 3 courses on quantum mechanics that students got from the university co-op in bounded photocopies. These books are a polished version of the lecture notes with more filled out explanations and are more friendly to the reader. Each book is complete and can be read independently, averaging at about 200 pages per volume. Quantum kinematics and dynamics are covered in all three volumes but are presented most thoroughly in this first volume, roughly around the first 100 pages while the other two volumes present shorter overviews of around 50 pages and emphasizing on different applications. I guess this is why it's called Basic Matters. Dirac's bra and cat formalism is used throughout all three books with consistent notations. The first volume carefully introduced the notions of quantum kinematics using a two-level system through a series of stern gallard type experiments the kind that measures the spin state of an electron. The treatment is clear and to the point, with a high density of equations. This is desirable in a textbook because more equations means more explicit explanations. What I'm most afraid of are paragraphs of wordy expositions, then jumping straight to the results with the intermediate steps left to the reader. You'll get none of that here. The most unusual thing about this volume is, right away in the first chapter, Bell's theorem is derived. This is the work that led to the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics. This sort of arrangement, discussing Bell's theorem before introducing quantum theory, makes it clear that the theorem is actually conceived under very general considerations. And we don't even need to know quantum mechanics to derive it. Certainly an interesting approach. The second volume includes a treatment of the quantum harmonic oscillator and introduced for the first time the concept of coherent states. A discussion on the orbital angular momentum follows. This is to prepare the reader for the important application of the hydrogen atom in a later chapter. 
Another highlight of this volume is a chapter on the various approximation methods in quantum mechanics. Specifically, how to handle small time-independent perturbations on the Hamiltonian of simple systems. The last volume of the series deals with the time evolution of quantum systems, focusing on the effects due to the time-dependent perturbation of the Hamiltonian. Important concepts introduced include the interaction picture, Born approximation, and the Dyson series. The famous fermi golden rule is also derived in the discussion on scattering processes in quantum mechanics. A general discussion of angular momenta is given in this volume based on the properties of rotational symmetry. This includes the spin of a particle, as well as how angular momenta are combined in quantum mechanics. This book ends with a chapter on the subject of indistinguishable particles, which leads to the classification of particles into bosons and fermions. This is vital to particle statistics. An important result is the Pauli exclusion principle, which states that no two electrons can occupy the same quantum state. All in all, this is an excellent series, covering all the standard topics in non-relativistic quantum mechanics, except it doesn't cover path integrals. In this respect, the book by Shankar is more complete, but the technique with which Dirac's bracket notation is employed in these books are far more elegant, superior in the sense of formalism. But this elegance may also be their shortcoming. Sometimes the derivations can be a bit too slick for them to stick to your mind. Most often, the steps that you remember the best are those that come naturally to your mind, as if you could have invented it yourself. This is what a well-motivated discussion can accomplish, which these books do not always succeed. The last technical book on this list is the one by the late Steven Weinberg. This is by far the most complete textbook on this list. It exceeds all the other entries in both depth and breadth. It is also the only textbook that explores the limitations of quantum mechanics, and talks about the measurement problem that plagues the theory since the beginning, and remains open even to this day. We have discussed this issue in Lecture 6 of our series, where we try to go through and explain precisely this book. Look below for the link to the video. This book is written in a style that is characteristic of Weinberg. No result is arrived at by fuzzy reasoning. Rather, we are led to it by his clear deductions, as if the conclusions are natural and inevitable. In this manner, we learn not just the topics, but how to do physics the proper way. From van der Waal forces to the physics of open systems, from Bell's theorem to quantum computation, the scope of this book is breathtaking, covering much of the significant applications of non-relativistic quantum mechanics. The relativistic part is left to its famous three-volume series on quantum field theory. We can view this book as the prerequisites to those books. But this is by no means a first course on quantum mechanics. It could use a more basic companion, like any of the previous books on this list. In fact, this is the key motivation for me to start my video series on this book, to fill in some of the gaps and make the book more accessible to a broader audience. The last book on this list is a popular book and the most recent one, published in 2018. Its subject is suggested in its title, What is Real? The Unfinished Quest for the Meaning of Quantum Physics by Adam Becker. It tries to present to the layman the measurement problem in quantum mechanics mentioned earlier. This has to do with the artificial dichotomy between the observer and the observed. Roughly speaking, the standard Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics promoted by Bohr treats macroscopic bodies like the observer or measuring apparatus differently from the microscopic particles they are observing. While a particle could exist in a superposition of states, the measuring apparatus could not and must give a definite outcome. Yet, measuring instruments themselves are made of particles. This very fact is used in their design and construction and cannot be disputed. 
so they must also obey quantum mechanics. This leads to the contradiction that lies at the very heart of the measurement problem. The Copenhagen interpretation avoids this problem by disputing the reality of the quantum world. Particles are merely tools to calculate the measured outcome, which is the only reality. This question of the nature of reality is what is being referred to in the title. This book is an extensive critique of the Copenhagen position. It traces its murky origin right back to the conception of the quantum theory, covering the quantum debate between Bohr and Einstein at a Solvay convention, and the alternative interpretations that follow, first the de Broglie bohm theory, then Everett's many worlds interpretation, all the way to John Stewart Bell's conception of his famous theorem and what it means for quantum mechanics. A highlight of this book is the author's attempt to give a layman's proof of this theorem using a casino analogy. This is the only such attempt I have seen in a popular book. I'm quite impressed with it. You can judge it for yourself. The author of this book possesses the rare combination of a physicist's training and a gift in storytelling. What is presented is not only an account of the brilliant scientific endeavors but also the very non-scientific human dramas and politics which shape our views of physical theories. Even if you can't understand his explanations on quantum mechanics, he gets you excited to pick up a textbook and see what the fuss is all about. This is the end of our list. The links to the books are in the description below. If you like this video, consider giving it a like and subscribe to this channel and get notified whenever a new video is ready. See you next time, and thanks for watching.